Solicitors. Rapid Solicitors, sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Accident compensation and medical negligence claims. Welcome to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. Eight exciting games for us to get through this week. Without further ado, here's what's coming up. The Sheffield Steelers and the Cardiff Devils met twice over the weekend. Who will come out on top in that affair? The Hall Stingrays, well, they came home empty-handed from a trip to Scotland. And Paul Thompson, well, he was on his best behaviour as the Coventry Blaze went to Dundee. Welcome folks to another week, an exciting week, and you'll see that I'm joined by Danny Myers, the GB and Sheffield Steelers International. Still feels a little strange saying the Sheffield Steelers, but uh, it was the big summer move, wasn't it, around the Elite League, and a move that has gone very well. It has. I'm, I'm extremely happy here in Sheffield, and uh, I'll always look fondly on my time back in Nottingham, but, you know, things moved on, and Nottingham moved on, so I did, and, uh, you know, lucky enough for me, I'm, I feel very fortunate that a team like Sheffield came in for me, and, uh, you know, so far, so good, and uh, I've really enjoyed it so far. We say so far, so good, but one of the reasons you're here today is that you're unable to practice with the Steelers because of the injury. Uh, just talk us through what happened up in Edinburgh, but it's a nasty concussion you've had. Yeah, it was just one of those plays where, uh, you know, I was... Uh, I went back to pick up the puck and, and then uh, came around the net and kind of wanted to get to the red line and just dumped the puck in. And as I did, I, uh, you know, kind of got hit from the blind side. I'm, I haven't seen it on the video yet, so I'm not really sure whether it was intent or not. You know, I'm not really in the business of calling guys out and starting a witch hunt, but it obviously caught me pretty good, caught me on the uh, chin. And uh, I know I was in trouble as soon as I went down, but, you know, I feel a lot better now. And, uh, and maybe I'll be in the lineup for this weekend. We'll just have to wait and see. Just very quickly, we've spoken to previous guests about uh, GB. You were away in Japan. Just talk us through uh, that experience and especially that, that final game because what a, what a combination of results. I think maybe my grin kind of gives it away a little bit. It was, <coughs> just, it was an unbelievable experience and um, a, lot, a lot's been talked about our, uh, our, our national team and um, the, the biggest strength we have is our team spirit. It's, it's just incredible. I mean, those bunch of guys, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's carried on since we've got back as well. We've all kept in touch a lot more than what we regularly would. And uh, it was great, obviously, to get through to the next round. And we're going to go to Latvia now with, you know, with a lot of confidence. We're the underdogs again, there's no doubt about it. But we feel that we can, we've got a chance. And, you know, worst case scenario, we can use this as a, as a training camp. I mean, we're going to play six games during the season that we generally wouldn't have had. So going into the World Championships in April, we're going to have some decent preparation. So... Uh, as I say, worst case scenario, we get to play six games that we wouldn't have done before. And uh, best case scenario, we go to the Olympics. Wow, what a trip to the Olympics that would be. More from Danny in a short while about Sheffield, the league and, of course, GB. But last Friday, whilst we were all watching this show, the Belfast Giants were taking on the Nottingham Panthers, a top-of-the-table clash in both the conference and in the Elite League table. Who was going to come out on top? Chris Ellis will tell us. A massive game at the top of the standings. Two of the previous three meetings this season had gone to penalty shots. So what chance of a repeat? First period action, Nottingham ahead through David Ling. And then they score again, both these coming on the power play. This time Clark's shot was saved and Anthony Stewart, the NHLer, gets his sixth goal of the season. Before the period was out, well, there was a fight. This one had been brewing for much of the first period. Adam Keefe against Guy Lapine. The two of them just seizing each other up, having a look. The moustache on Keith makes him look good, doesn't it? And the bold-headed Lapine, they both go with some big bombs. Two very strong men, neither of them giving an inch. Keith nearly goes down, but uses his strength to get him back up again. Then the two of them hold on for a short while. Lapine just trying to get his right free. A couple of jabs from Keith. Lapine there with a jab again over the top from both of them. They continue to go full tilt until Keith really, I think, slips. 
And that's the end of the fight. And of course, it was soon to be the end of the first period. To period two, a power play for the home side. Former Panthers, Scott Champagne involved here. And it is Peacock, the GB international, gives himself space and fires past Kowalski. So that makes it 2-1. A one-goal game going into the final minute. Netminder Murphy is pulled. It's loose in front of the net. Kowalski can't get there. But Gregory Stewart can, a sixth of the year. Look how delighted Belfast are. They still have only lost two in regulation this season. So to penalty shots. And Eric Werner, he scores for Nottingham. The classy defenseman. At the other end, another classy defenseman. Jeff Mason, he scores for the home side. 1-1 one, one after one shot each. Now David Ling, he's proving to be good for Nottingham on penalty shots. He has a chance to put Nottingham ahead once more. Goes low past Murphy, an angry Stephen Murphy. At the other end, Peacock sees the netminder go down, but into the side netting. Francis, he can win it for Nottingham. In on goal, neat finish. Two points for Panthers, one for the Giants. Final score in the Odyssey. Belfast two, Nottingham three. A lovely finish from Neil Francis there, earning the Nottingham Panthers that extra point. But the Belfast Giants pick up a point again. They seem to do it in every game. In fact, all bar two games this year, they've actually taken something out of every game they've played. It's an incredible record, really. Mm. It's, and, uh, you know, I've worked with Doug Christensen with the uh, Great Britain national team, and I know why he makes that team successful. He's an outstanding coach and he gets the best out of their players and they really do have a never-say-die attitude. Uh, and it's shown, I mean, the losses that they have, they, they still pick up a point and uh, they look very formidable again this year. You say never-say-die, they were in a little bit of a sticky position, weren't they, here? 2-0 yep. down, we're going to see a couple of goals from that one. The uh, first goal from Stewart. Put yeah, the, the big guy, Stewart. I mean, uh, I've played against him and he's pretty tough to move in front yeah. of that net. And, uh, you know, a greasy goal there, but, you know, they all count. And, Another uh, greasy one here to tie it, it and is. earn the point. And it's, it's funny because they're two very skillful teams, but uh, it, it, it just goes to show that sometimes when you have two teams that are so competitive, it's going to take a greasy goal to, uh, to score or equalise. Into the penalty shootout. Can be a lottery at this stage, can't it? Yeah, it can, but it's a very important lottery, as, as seen. It's either two points or one point, and uh, Nottingham have done very well so far in the penalty shoot. When we were watching uh, these highlights earlier, Peacock misses there. You were telling me about this move. Francis pulls it all the time, you tell you. Yeah, he does. I'm not sure he'd be too happy about me saying this uh, on Sky, but uh, obviously I've, I've played with Franny. He's a fantastic player, um, and he, he's very good in the penalty shootout. And uh, he pulled that move against John DeCaro when he played against yeah. us at the start of the season. I was kind of screaming at Johnny to say what he was going to do. But uh, even still, even if you know that he's going to do that move, uh, Franny's skillful enough to, to pull another move if need be. And uh, he's, uh, again, he's having a fantastic season for the Panthers. Well done, Neil Francis. Well done, the Panthers. Are two, uh, well, two points they take out of the Odyssey Arena, and that's a very hard thing to do. Right, let's go to Glasgow, where the Brayhead clan were in action on Saturday night. And this game was against the Holsteins. Stingrays. It was their third meeting in seven days. One win to the Stingrays, one win to the clan. Who was going to win the series? Chris Ellis will tell us. This was the third meeting between these two sides in seven days. The mini-series stood at one all. So what more incentive then just to win this run of games between the two sides? Good work in the corner there from Farmer and Miller. And that creates the goal for Ash Goldie, a 13th of the year for him. Brayhead leading at 12.21. To period two now, and Brayhead in the ascendancy once more. They outshot the visitors 14.10. That's a terrific move in front of the netminder from Galbraith. All the time in the world and so calm. A 15th of the year for the former Nottingham man. 2-0 scoreline then for the Brayhead clan. For the whole Stingrays, they certainly weren't going to give up without a fight. Silverthorne from out the corner and Ozolin scores. At 32-59, 2-1 is the scoreline. Things got better for the Stingrays. They had some momentum and the puck was loose in front of the net. And Silverthorne from a tight angle finds a way through a ninth of the year for him. 2-2 scoreline then, going into period three. Could the Brayhead clan cope with the pressure? Well, they were led by their player coach, Jordan Krestanovic. Drew Miller, the NHL, are involved as well. That's a terrific finish from Ash Gold. He goes upstairs. It's 3-2, 53 seconds into the third period. But back came the visitors once more. Down the left-hand side is Tendler. He goes into the back of the net. 46-33. It's a 3-3 scoreline. 
in the closing stages into the final minute, it's a power play for the Brayhead clan. You want people like Jade Galbraith on the ice, and there's Miller for his ninth of the year. Final score in Brayhead, the clan four, all three. Are you kidding me, Jade? What a pass that was. I, uh, he was almost looking at us, wasn't he, on the cameras there, and then he just throws that pass over to Miller, a, a pass only he can make. It was almost like he looked at the rest of the arena and said, watch this, and then just went back door and um, had the privilege of playing with Jade, and he's, he's a fantastic guy and, and what an unbelievable player. And as you say, I think he's pretty much the only guy in the league that can make a pass like that. A little bit of pressure on the Brea clan right now. It was an important victory. It was an important series against the Stingrays because they'd gone to the top of the, uh, the Gardner Conference. And from a confidence point of view, they kind of needed to get back on top of that division. It's funny, isn't it? At the start of the season, I think most people had Brea head down as possibly being the lead title winners. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, things haven't gone well for them. Uh, but there's no doubt they have the talent there. They, uh, they've taken a few bad beatings as of late but that will that will that will serve them well it's good that the um, the big guns have been scoring and uh, to get the win is very important for them let's take a look at some of those goals and see some of those big guns that found the uh, back of the net uh... that's a great pass from uh, Robert Farmer there the uh, the GB international and uh, Ash Goldie the cap captain getting a goal and um, and again he gets another one here real nice release and uh, that's what he's been renowned for. And that's it's been what a great the, uh, signing from Goldie, hasn't he? He has, and uh, he comes with a good reputation, and uh, you can see why. Tendler there, just scores nearly every night, doesn't he? Yeah, he seems to, every single night. And yeah. here's Jay just looking up, blowing a kiss, and then just going back door. <laughs> Jay, I was in Hull the other week, and I, I saw Jade. He wasn't smiling, he wasn't happy, and then in the game, kind of didn't really play well. He's one of those guys that needs to be happy. He needs everybody around him to be happy and everything going his way. And when he is, he's an exceptional talent, isn't he? And Bray, some, somehow, have got to tickle him, haven't they? They've, they've, got to, they've got to keep him going. Sometimes I don't think Jade realises just how, how much of an effect he has on a team, not just obviously on the ice, but off the ice. He's a huge personality. He um, is a very funny guy. He's... Uh, He's, he's, he's good to be around and sometimes Jade has to realise that when, when he's, he's down, unfortunately, you know, other guys kind of look at it because he, he is a leader. He, he has to be a leader out there and, and guys feed off Jade. And I, I, I knew when Jade was going to play well before a game because he'd have that smile on, your fa on his face and he would be energetic and, and, um, and other guys feed off that. And I think as Jade goes on with his career and certainly now that he's assistant coaching at Brayhead he's gonna he's gonna learn this role and uh, I think he's starting to realize that yeah unfortunately for him he, there's no off nights for Jay Galbraith with the uh, Bray, Bray clan want to win. And remember folks it's not a stick it's a wand that Jade Galbraith uses you'll be able to see more of Galbraith and the Brayhead clan in their game in Coventry on the Sunday evening that'll all come after the break don't you go anywhere plenty more action still to come. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League highlight show here on Sky Sports. Time for more action now as we head up to Dundee where the Coventry Blaze were in town. It was a quiet Coventry Blaze bench. Well, it would be. Their head coach, Paul Thompson, had just received a £500 fine off the Elite League for bad conduct. It's about time that brummy got done rather than this one. Chris Ellis will talk you through it. The Blaze went into this trip to Scotland with four straight road defeats. Dundee's home form had been good up until recent regulation time defeats to Cardiff and Belfast. But Jeff Hutchins' side were ahead. Kraus there with his second goal of the season, 11.03 gone in the game. To period two now, and a power play. And this time, Kraus turns provider. Baxter with the other assist, and all alone at the back door, McLean. Goal number seven of the season. You'll see from the replay, no one had him. Nothing the netminder could do into an empty net basically so period two was drawing to a close coming up to the final five minutes and Bolesky and Griffin get the assists and he goes top shelf does Shade Guthrie goal number 12 of the season so to period three and you might think that the next goal would be crucial 
And it is the Dundee star to go on the attack. And out of position is Hirsch on the backhand McLean. He goes top shelf. It's 3-1 at 44.03. But remarkably, the Blaze still find time to come back shorthanded. Look at this goal in terms of determination. It's Bolesky gets it away from Wirral. And then the move on the netminder by Guthrie, a 13th of the year, a second goal of the night. So that's short-handed. And little over a minute later, still with a man short. It's pandemonium in front of the net. And Mike shoot, calm as you like, an 11th goal of the season for the D-man to take us to penalty shots. Guthrie has the first chance. He is delighted to score. So that's 1-0 in the shootout. Sammy Ryanen. You can bank on him scoring, and he does score. So 1-1 one, one after 1. We go to penalty 2. Brad Lieb steps up first of all for the Coventry Blaze. Goes right-hand side and low, past Riapel, who still has the best save percentage in the league. Now at the other end, Mike Wirral. He is not able to score. It means the NHL and Matt Bolesky can win the game for the Coventry Blaze. He does do that. Final score, Dundee 3, Coventry 4. I'm just guessing, but there was a bit of kicking the cat when Jeff Hutchins got home after uh, that game, Danny. They were goal up, well, two goals up with five minutes to go. You get a power play and can see two short-handed. He will not be a happy coach. It's astonishing, really. Yeah. I mean, I was, um, I was looking at the updates and saw it was 3-1, and then I saw that the, the Dundee Stars were on the power play, and I kind of... Well, just switched off the computer, really. I just assumed that the, the game would be uh, dead and buried. But uh, you know what? Credit to the Coventry Blaze. There's a... Uh, it's a different it's, Blaze it team is, this year, it isn't is, it? It's, it's a Blaze team that, when I first came into the league, was the sort of Blaze team that I was used to playing against. You know, they're very physical, um, they're very hard-working. And uh, I think Tomo's... This is, this is the sort of team that Tomo has always kind of built. And uh, unfortunately, the... The years haven't been too kind to uh, the Blaze that last two or three, but they're back where I think they belong and they're an extremely hard team to, to compete against. They weren't just two short handies, they were two short handers that really Hutchins will be just kicking himself with. Let's just see them again. It's 3 1, final five minutes. Talk us through them. Well, I mean, when Bolesky gets the uh, puck there and, and, and tries to deke, four guys get on him and it looks like the, uh, the opportunity's gone, but sure enough, they leave Guthrie and you, you can't leave Shay Guthrie um, in the middle of the net like that. And, uh, you know, again here, Blaze getting their own rebound, and um, that's a hell of a shot, a hell of a shot. Yeah, he's come out well, hasn't he, Shorte? Just, just very quickly, just on the Paul Thompson being fined, it was a big decision by the league to actually go down the route of, of finding a coach. He got involved in a, in a little bit of a, a contra throw with uh, one of the Cardiff fans. But in certain rinks, Coventry, Cardiff, Hull, it's so intense there. From a player and from a coach's point of view, what's it like when you have a barrack of abuse coming at you for 60 minutes? Sometimes you have to just let it out, don't you? You do, you and do. <laughs> uh, it is frustrating. And um, I'm not really, I don't really buy the I pay my ticket so I can say whatever I want uh, kind of deal, to be honest with you. Um, I know people like to use the word banter and you can kind of go back and forth, but there are often times when Unfortunately, fans do overstep the mark, and um, you know, you, unfortunately, you, you get it on social media, as, as, as Twitter and, and, and Facebook, and you do get it during the game. But um, I'm, I'm sure Tomo, he was, you know, he's a fiery, fiery character at best, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that it kind of got a little bit too much for him, and uh, he obviously said something back. But to be honest with you, I'm sure whatever he said back to a fan is something that you know has gone through all us players' minds uh, throughout our careers. I'm sure it has. Well, whilst Tomo was on best behaviour in Dundee, Danny was actually in the press box at the Sheffield Arena watching the Sheffield Steelers take on the Cardiff Devils. It was the first of two games between Jared Adams and Ryan Finity sides over the weekend. How did they do, Chris Ellis? This was a big game for the Cardiff Devils to show how far they've come. They've crept up on the leaders in recent weeks to a chance to impress in the Motor Point Arena. But they fell behind Ashley Tate and the Sheffield Steelers with the first goal of the night. Sarage and Lebuy with the assist, and you'll see from the replay, the redirect from the GB International. 6.32 gone, and the Steelers ahead. Then on the power play, just past the midway point, Limpright and Sestito involved, and Drew Fatter drifts to the right-hand side, and 10.22 gone, it's 2 
nil Sheffield. And you'll see from the replay here, I think the netminder will want this one back. Fatter gets into position, he shoots, it hits the pad, it hits the stick, it goes somewhere in the body, and the next time you see it, it trickles into the back of the net. A 2-0 first period lead, but there was time for more goal action in the opening period. Now, the Cardiff Devils have been missing Max Beerbrayer for eight games through suspension. Well, here, McRae and Hill set him up, and there he is, alone at the back door, in the right circle. It's a one-goal game at the end of the first period. We were coming to a close, the time of it was 18.25. He's not going to miss there on his return. No goals in period two, so to period three, and the Devils coming forward. Can they find a leveller and maybe take it to overtime? Well, at the back door there was Faulkner, the league's leading goal scorer, set up by Blight and Marsh, a 21st goal of the year. So they are level. Marsh there across the goal, and Faulkner is not going to miss that opportunity. So it is 2-2, and we're going to see a dramatic finish as well. The Devils coming forward once more. This time, Bissonnet highly involved. Working hard, he does into the offensive zone. And again, it's just patient work from the visitors. And Faulkner, left-hand side, scores. And it turned out to be the game-winning goal. A 22nd of the year for him. And the Devils take the points in the Motor Point Arena. Final score, Sheffield Steelers 2. Cardiff Devils three. That Mac Faulkner again, he gets a brace in a 3-2 game. What a signing he's been for Jared Adams' team. Not just scoring a lot of goals, scoring big game winning goals. And what a release on that yeah. last goal. Um, just watching it back, it was a great pass by uh, Bizonette there, but what a release. And um, unfortunately for us in uh, Sheffield, he scored a hat-trick past us in the first weekend. So uh, we, we knew about him after the first weekend and uh, he's just seemed to have continued his rich frame of form and he's an excellent signer. Sheffield got off to the best possible start. Was the key goal the 2-1 goal, if you like? If Sheffield had gone in 2-0 up at the end of the first, might have been different? I actually came down to the change room with about a minute and a half to go um, to, to come see the guys and obviously during that minute and a half uh, Cardiff scored and I didn't know until I got down and uh, as soon as you, I walked in and realised it was 2-1 there was, it was a big difference between 2-0 two, two and 2-1 because at the time we were doing a great job of keeping them at bay and uh, it was a big goal to make it 2-1 and then uh, unfortunately I think fatigue set in with only four D-men and, and the Cardiff Devils uh, made the most of it. Just briefly, the Devils are learning to win on the road, aren't they? Historically, win at home, don't win on the road. This year, winning home and away. Well, they have, uh, they have some excellent skaters and their deer are a lot more mobile than what they were in the previous seasons and the, you know, the addition of Mark Richardson has, has now taken them up to a whole new level. Um, Richie, for me, is not only one of the best British defensemen, he's one of the elite defensemen in the league and uh, he's going to make a massive difference to that team. He is indeed. Time for a break now. When we come back, we'll be heading back up to Dundee. This time in town will be the Nottingham Panthers, so don't go anywhere. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League highlight show here on Sky Sports. Let's get straight back to hockey action. Second home game of the weekend for the Dundee Stars. Next up in town with the Nottingham Panthers. Chris Ellis. Dundee went into this game with five straight losses to their name, so they were grateful for a terrific start to period two. Wirral working hard right-hand side, then the other assist goes to Baxter, and former Panther Sammy Ryan was behind the goal line when he got this one to go in and deflect off Kowalski for 1-0 to the home side at 45 seconds into period two. Giveaway, though, there by Wirral, short-handed breakaway, for Bruce Graham and Nottingham a level in the 11th of the year for him. And at 28-49, it's a 1-1 game. Face off there by Matthew Myers and then it's picked up behind the net by Gallivan. Nottingham patient with this move. Mark Leavers also involved. 
and it comes to Lakovic. That's a great pass, and Lakovic gets the rebound there, and ninth of the year for him. So 2-1 Nottingham. Into period three, only a one-goal game at this point. Lakovic with some neat skills, saved by the netminder Ria Pal, and Garavan gets Nottingham's third of the night. 43-05. Nottingham were dominant throughout the game. They had 52 shots on goal. That shows how dominant they were. This time it's Fox who's working well. Bruce Graham involved. You see the two of them battling in the corner. Really working hard. And when it comes out to David Clark, he comes away from his marker, Sam McCloskey. And it's 4-1 Nottingham. And the points are going back to the Lace City. There was still time for one more goal. Weaver and Clark this time setting up Ling, who takes his time and gets goal number five. Final score in Dundee. The Stars won, the Panthers five. Ominous for everybody else around the league as the Nottingham Panthers, well, the wheel's just turning. Comfortable victory. Yeah, they're looking very strong, very strong. And uh, they've got a lot of winners in that team. They've obviously had a lot of success over the last five, six seasons. And, uh, you know, sooner or later, we keep saying it every year that the Panthers, you know, this could be the year. And um, they're looking very formidable again this year. Let's take a quick look uh, at some of the highlights. And actually, Dundee got off to a great start. Former Panther uh, putting the stars ahead. Yeah, Sammy with a bit of a fluky goal there. I know uh, Kowalski certainly would want that one back. It was kind talk of a, the, talk a, a strange one. goal. What, what's Will doing there? There doesn't seem a lot of effort getting back. It kind of looks like everything's in a little bit slow motion there. And, uh, you know, good finish for, uh, for Bruce Graham. And then uh, just here just shows the, uh, the exceptional skills of uh, Robert Lakovic. And uh, Gallerman uh, swallows up the uh, rebound. And then a fifth one? Yeah, uh, David Ling, um, who's been a, a great addition for the Panthers. He's kind of, in a way, kind of like a bit of a Bruce Richardson, you know, very gritty, but he has, you know, top-end skill. And uh, he's going to be a very important player for them down the stretch. The Stars have come a little bit unstuck, haven't they, when they've faced Sheffield, Cardiff and Nottingham um, and Coventry in their last four games up at, uh, up at Dundee. It's a little bit different for them now. Yes, it is, but it kind of that's what was expected, really, wasn't it? I think uh, I thought they'd done a, a fantastic job getting Jeff Hutchins, someone who's known the league, someone who's played on a, a top of, top of the table team in Belfast. So obviously he's been at the, down at the bottom with uh, Edinburgh Capitals, but he knows the league very well. He knew that you had to get a good goal, and he certainly yeah. got one there. He has indeed. More hockey action now. Let's go from Dundee to Edinburgh. Big game between the Edinburgh Capitals and the Holstein Grays. Really important in the Gardner Conference. These two sides are at the wrong end of the Elite League table, but things looking up for the Stingrays in the Gardner Conference table, they're at the right end of the standings. The first goal of the night went to the home side. Lineweber in the left circle assisted Dobrin and Hartman. 1-0 to the Edinburgh Capitals. But back came the visitors. Tendler and Davis got the assist on this one. Osman there. He scored his 15th goal of the season. We see the game level at 1-1. To period two, another power play to the home side. They really took advantage with the man advantage in this game. Hartman and Yarolin combining this time and all alone just ghosting in at the back door. Lineweber, a third now of the season, a second of the game. And he makes it 2-1 at 24-20. Things got better four minutes later. Once more on the power play. This time, Lineweber turns to be the man with the assist. Dobrunt gets the other one. And it is all alone at the back door. Time to get it on his backhand and make it 3-1. Hartman, the player coach, with goal number seven of the season for him. The Stingrays weren't finished, though, and they came back into the game. The Caps could not clear their lines, and Cloutier and Hand combined, and a clever finish from Andre. And then at 33-38, it was suddenly a one-goal game. At one end, the Stingrays were attacking and looking to get the game level. They're piling pressure on the net, but it was a turnover here, and suddenly breaking away two-on-one were the home side. Clever play, and it is Zenberg who scores 37-45, an eighth of the year for him. It's 4-2, and things were really swinging in the home side's favour. To period three, and we were past the midway point of that final session, and this time, Lineweber and Hartman combine Cleverly worked goal for them. An eighth of the year for the player coach. A second of the game. It's 5-2. And that really was game set and match. There was still time for one more goal. The leading goal scorer for the Caps. It's Yarolin with a 16th of the season. Took a deflection, but he won't mind one bit. Edinburgh 6, 
hole two. It's a very different Edinburgh Capitals team when they play up in Murrayfield, isn't it, Danny? It's a tough barn to go and comprehensive victory for, uh, for Hartman's team. Yeah, I think, and it's good for the league that they're going to be a lot more competitive. They've, uh, they've added some, some new players. They've got two new players, which I think is great, which shows an intent to their fans and, and to the rest of the league that they're not going to be you know, pushovers. A couple of weeks ago when we went there, uh, we found it very, very difficult. Two one down with about six minutes to go, and we managed to scrape out a 3-2 win and a lucky 3-2 win. And uh, they seem to be improving, the, the Capitals. Let's go from one game to another. Let's go to the Sky Dome Arena. Jay Galbraith, the Brayhead clan, Jordan Kristanovic, they all got on the bus. They headed down to Coventry. What kind of Coventry side would they face, Chris Ellis? No goals in the first period here, but there were 78 shots on goal between the two sides throughout the game. We're very early in period two, a power play to the Coventry Blaze. Both the Lee brothers involved here, very patient between all the players on the ice. Bolesky involved too, and it comes to Jadis in the right circle. It's 1-0 Coventry, 50 seconds into the second period. That lead didn't last for long, though. Goldie wins the face-off. One-timer from Galbraith, number 16 of the year for him. On the power play again, we're level at 1-1. But Galbraith involved here, a giveaway, and then the breakaway from Greg Lee. Galbraith is all over him, and referee Michael Hicks calls a penalty shot. Galbraith, you can see, complaining. He's not happy with that decision, but it's going to be a penalty shot, and it's going to be Greg Lieb. And can he put the home side back into the lead in the Sky Dome? Well, he just really goes too wide on that one. It's no goal. We stay level at 1-1. So still second period action. And recently, Russ Cowley has come back after injury. The Blaze fans thrilled to have him back. Well, a turnover, short-handed, sees Bolesky and Domish get the assist. Cowley scores a second goal of the year. Still the shots reined in on goal. Coventry out shooting the clan 15-7 in this period. And this time, Cowley sets up Brad Lieb on the right-hand side. It is a 3-1 hockey game. And all the points staying in the Sky Dome. Still, the blaze kept coming when even at the midway point of this third period. This time, it is Bradlieb and Cowley once more, setting up Greg Lieb, and it's 4-1. So Cowley has a goal and two assists. He really is making a great return to the blaze lineup. So at this stage, it's 4-1. Long range shot on goal by the clan. And look, coming forward for the Coventry blaze, Right in the slot there, it takes a deflection. It is Cowley with his second of the night. Two plus two for him, what a game for him. And the Blades win. Final score, Coventry five, plan one. I was at the Sky Dome Arena on uh, Sunday evening to see that game, and I have to tell you, Danny, that was as comfortable as victory as the Coventry Blades are going to have all year. Brayhead basically didn't give them nothing, and the highlights kind of showed that. Yeah, it's, it's uh, a pretty tough time, isn't it? And. Um, it's, uh, they've been let down by, obviously, team defence, I think, mostly. I mean, Because them like, gets all the blame, but the, the, for the defencemen in front of them, they've got to take a bit of the blame, haven't they? Well, not just the defence, the forwards as well. You defend as five and you attack as five. And uh, unfortunately, as a goalie, you are going to have you know, that, that added pressure. And when things don't go right, you know, unfortunately, it's going to be laid in front of him. But I think as, as a team, they obviously need to... They need to buckle up there. And at the same time, watching the highlights, there were a couple of unlucky goals. I mean, I don't want to take anything yeah. away from Russ Cowley. His second one was obviously a deflection that went over the top. And there was a couple of deflected shots. And, you know, when, you, when your luck's out, it just seems everything seems to uh, snowball from there. Big signing getting Russ Cowley back after his retirement. I reckon it was about four years he had off. Anyway, good to have you back, Russ. Time for a break now. We'll have the rest of the action from around the league and all the results and fixtures for next weekend after this break. Don't go anywhere. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League Highlight Show here on Sky Sports. Final game of the weekend, the big blue tent in Cardiff was where the Sheffield Steelers were in Challenge Cup action. Sit back and enjoy 12 goals, 
and a bit more besides in a game that swung one way than the other. First goal of the night, Ashley Tate setting up Jeff Legui at the back door. A 15th goal of the year for him. 1-0 Sheffield, 6-11 gone. On the power play, that. And on the power play, too, the home side were level. Kenton Smith there setting up Ben Davis. A sixth of the year for him. And we see the game level at 1-1. Then the Sheffield Steelers in period two go ahead short-handed off the board for Limpright. One on one, it's 2-1 Sheffield. They lead for a second time. Still in the second period now. And a bit of action on the left-hand side. And the puck is picked up there by Chris Blight. And Faulkner and Bissonette are involved in this one. It's scrappy and right on the doorstep. Stuart McRae, it's 2-2. We're level in the big blue tent. I told you it went one way, then the other. This one now sees the Steelers go back into the lead. By then, we saw a replacement in net. Phil Azur replaced by Joe Myers. He picked the puck out the net there from Drew Fatter. 34 minutes gone. 3-2 to the visitors. A rebound once more for Stuart McRae. He made it 3-3. So at this stage, the Devils had come from a goal down three times and were level at 3-3. Nine seconds to go in period two. Bissonnette first of all, and then Faulkner here. So strong on the boards. And he just feeds it out there in front for Tyson Marsh. A great goal to put the home side ahead. 39-51. And 4-3 became 5-3. Four minutes and six seconds into the third period. It was right on the doorstep, and Hill gets a seventh of the year. So 5-3, a two-goal game. Surely Cardiff were going to win this one, were they? A long-range shot there spilled into the back of the net. That by Hewitt, so that makes it 5-4. And the momentum really with the Steelers now. A one-goal game suddenly got even better for them. Legui and Saric combining. They come into the offensive zone. And that is a terrific finish in the end from Limpright. Great play from him. And he makes it a level game. 5-5. Five, five. Just over a minute later. Into the offensive zone comes Shields. And he scores to make it 6-5. Five. five and a half minutes to go at this stage. And we were down to the final 90 seconds. Could the Devils get this one into overtime and maybe even penalty shots. Well, it was McRae who started the move. He took his time, he was patient with this build-up and then via Hill and Marsh, a couple of attempts for McRae, but he scores and makes it 6-6. What a terrific game. No goals in overtime, so we went to penalties. And first of all, Jeff Legui. He can't score for the Steelers. At the other end, it was a chance for Chris Blight. So it stays at nil-nil with him unable to score. Sean Limpright for the Steelers. He doesn't score. So Mac Faulkner, you put your money on him scoring. And Faulkner can't score. Is someone going to score in this shootout? Colin Shields at the other end for the Steelers. He scored in the game. And yes, he scores in the shootout. So Stuart McRae has to score. And McRae does score and manages to make it 1-1 in the shootout. So we go to sudden death. Jeff Legui, his second attempt, didn't score first time and doesn't score second time. So can Blight win the game for the Cardiff Devils? He does. So after penalties, Cardiff 7, Sheffield 6. Well, the Cardiff Devils then victorious over the Sheffield Steelers in that shootout. Uh, an awkward one, Challenge Cup game. That point takes the Steelers top of their uh, group, but you could see there wasn't a lot of intensity in that battle, was there? No, there wasn't, and uh, it was quite fortunate, really, because we, uh, we only had 4D going into the game, and unfortunately... Matthew Stevenson got a 10-minute uh, misconduct, so he went down to 3D. So you can imagine he was not the most popular guy in the room, but uh, we, we got through without any uh, injuries, and uh, it was obviously a confidence booster for, for the Devils. So, uh, you know, I guess everyone just moves on. You are the Challenge Cup expert. Let's take a look at the Challenge Cup standings right now. The, uh, that game between the Sheffield Steelers and the Cardiff Devils was the only one of last weekend. We'll see the two groups. Belfast lead the way in uh, Group A, that group is done and dusted, but 
the Group B could go Sheffield, Nottingham or Coventry's way. Coventry and Nottingham playing midweek and then Sheffield playing in Coventry on um, Sunday. Just talk us through the Challenge Cup. You've lifted the trophy in the last three years as captain of the Nottingham Panthers. How important is it, not just to win a trophy, but for your whole season and how it drives you on for the remainder of the year? Well, when you have a, a fan base and an organisation that demands success, it's, uh, it's very important. And um, with the Panthers, they've won the, uh, the double the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, they won a Challenge Cup first and then went on to win the playoffs. And I, I honestly think that winning the Challenge Cup galvanised them to go on to win the playoffs afterwards and, um, and have that experience of, of playing a final. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's definitely helped the Panthers with their success in the, uh, lately. And, um, you know, for, for, for us in Sheffield, we want to win the Challenge Cup. There's no doubt about it. And we want to finish top um, because if you finish top, you obviously have the choice of having the home leg uh, Home or home or away, uh, the, uh, so it's it's very important that you know we finish finish strong with this uh, with the standings here. Okay, right. You've seen all the action. Let's take a recap then of all the results from around the Rapid Solicitors Elite Ice Hockey League. It started last Friday with the Belfast Giants two, the Nottingham Panthers three in a shootout. Dundee Stars four to three. They went down to the Coventry Blaze. Whilst it was four three in Brayhead between the Clan and the Holstein Greys. And 3-2 with the Cardiff Devils coming from behind. They hit three without reply to beat the Steelers 3-2. Into Sunday, Coventry 5-1 against the Brayhead clan. It was also 5-1 in Dundee with the Panthers victorious there. Edinburgh 6-2 over the Hull Stingrays. And then the Cardiff Devils in that shootout against the Sheffield Steelers 7-6. So let's take a look at the league standings. We'll start off with the two conferences first, very tight between the Steelers, the Giants, the Devils, the Panthers and the Blaze. Remember, Nottingham and Coventry have got games in hand. And then in the Gardner Conference, Brayhead at last get to the top of that division. The whole Stingrays, the Dundee Stars. But as we've seen, the Edinburgh Capitals are coming strong. That's going to be a fight, that is, for those final player positions. Let's see what happens when you mix the two together. Have you ever seen a league table, Danny, as tight as that? 31, 29, 29, 27, 27. It's incredible really isn't it and I think um, now that we're coming into the uh, the Christmas period I think y you generally find that teams kind of separate themselves from from each other and um, for us in Sheffield we go Belfast, Sheff uh, Belfast, Nottingham, Nottingham, Coventry, Coventry, Belfast so I mean it's absolutely massive for us the Christmas period so uh, I'm sure it is for the other teams as well and I think going into January you might then start seeing teams kind of separate from each other and see who will be the favourite to win the, the league Play, title. Player of the month, your mate, my mate Chris Ellis obviously had his voting paper out because he went with Sammy Reinen again. He loves Sammy Reinen. And, and rightly so, let's take a look at some of the action from him. He's been an outstanding signing for the Dundee Stars and richly deserves this Player of the Month award. He, he has, and uh, Sammy came in halfway through the season in Nottingham last season and uh, was more of a, um, a set-up guy, really. I think he only had three or four goals with the Panthers, but this year... <laughs> With, with the Dundee Stars, he's scoring goals, he's, he's also getting his assists and he really is the go-to guy in Dundee and, uh, and uh, he's thriving with the responsibility and, um, and he's, he's definitely uh, repaying the Dundee Stars for the faith that they're showing in him. He's got a great partnership as well, Wirral's been a, been a good asset to him also. It's funny isn't it because Wirral you know, didn't do so much in, in Brayhead and, and with Sammy and Wirral uh, playing together they really seem to have uh, brought the best out of each other and uh, they're a good partnership in the league uh, as anybody else. OK, you'll be able to see Ryan Ennen, you'll be able to see Wirral, you'll be able to see the Dundee Stars because there's some great ice hockey fixtures coming up in the league this weekend. As we always say, as good as this show is, it's not as good as seeing it live. So let's take a look at the fixtures. At Ice Sheffield on Saturday, the Steelers take on the Edinburgh Capitals. Cardiff take on the Nottingham Panthers. More on that game in a moment. Five take on the Belfast Giants. Flipping forward to Sunday at the NIC, the Stingrays are in town. Four o'clock face-off there in Nottingham. Edinburgh at home against the Belfast Giants. Dundee entertain the Brayhead clan. And the Coventry Blaze take on the Sheffield Steelers in the final group game of the Challenge Cup this season. You'll be able to see all the goals and all the highlights in next week's show. 10.30pm on Sky Sports 3. That's next Friday, 10.30, Sky Sports 3. Right, 
One game you must go and see is the Cardiff Devils versus the Nottingham Panthers. Not only because it'll be a great game in the big blue team, but also because Mac Faulkner, Tyson March and Stuart McRae are involved in a great charity, Hockey Players for Kids. They're auctioning shirts, doing raffles, donations. If you've been following us all on Twitter this week, you'll know they've raised over £1,000 already for Hockey Players for Kids. Danny, I'm sure you'll agree, a great cause and one worthy of supporting in Cardiff this weekend. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, um, hockey players, certainly in, in our country, we do as much as we can for charities. And it's and um, I, I've got wind of what the guys are doing in Cardiff. And, uh, Wasn't it one of your former Panthers yeah, teammates Yeah, it, it that started was, yes. Charity. It was actually um, hockey players with kids started with a guy called uh, Dustin Sprout who uh, played for uh, Nottingham for a little bit. Uh, he was only there for uh, two or three months. Tremendous guy who uh, started it in Cincinnati and it's just grown from there. He, he emailed players and asked them to come on board and, you know, being the good people that hockey players are, people have jumped on board and obviously the guys uh, in Cardiff now are taking it to the next stage. And, and with, you know, all, with all the rivalry, with all the teams, Sheffield, Nottingham, Cardiff, it's great when they can all come together because there's players in lots of different teams all associated with hockey players for kids. Yes, there is, absolutely. And uh, it's funny, hockey's a, a small world. We all seem to know each other or know a guy that knows another guy. And uh, But when it comes to charity and, you know, helping out kids, obviously everyone comes together. And, uh, and I'm sure even, you know, the fans might not give... Uh, the Panthers players any stick for just five minutes while they're, uh, they're helping out. Well, good luck to Faulkner, Marsh and McRae and the Cardiff Devils for Hockey Players for Kids. We hope they raise a fortune and give kids a great Christmas. Folks, enjoy your hockey weekend. Try and take in a game. You know it's much better live. You get the real spit and feathers of it all. Enjoy your hockey weekend. We'll be back at this time next week with all the highlights and all the goals. Have a great hockey weekend. Good night. Sponsors of the Elite Ice Hockey League on Sky Sports.